back to this already, the final segment of today's Price of Business. I'm your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. We're going to talk a little bit about crowdfunding, which is always a hot topic out there in the business front, with Manfred Sternberg. He's an attorney, but he's so much more than that. Manfred, good to see you. How are you? Nice to see you. I'm doing fine. Tell us a little bit about your story. Give us a little bit of background. Well, you know, crowdfunding has been around for years. Uh, it's uh, everywhere. If you think about when you go to church and they pass the collection plate around, that's crowdfunding. And so it's been around forever, but uh, in 2012, the government, the federal government passed something called the Jobs Act, which changed everything for crowdfunding. Now you can actually crowdfund and sell equity or debt. Right. To the crowd. It's, it's created something that used to be only for the most elite investors. You know, it's, it's created kind of a more egalitarian environment when it comes to that. That's exactly right. And so when they passed the Jobs Act, they said, we want the regular guy to be able to invest in the next Google. Right. And um, before, you had to be the top 1% in income or, or wealth in order to invest. They call those accredited investors. Yeah. But now, unaccredited investors can participate in those type of activities as well. Yeah, really, you're relegated to buying stock. Is really about all you could do. That's and, correct. Uh, the real money made was way, way before it got to uh, Wall Street. That's right. And if you buy a share of stock, uh, you get a piece of a company that already is hopefully successful. But what crowdfunding does in, in that world uh, today is it enables you to invest in real estate or oil and gas, or a movie, or the next Google. Mm -hmm. So it enables an entrepreneur to raise money in ways that they couldn't raise it six months ago. Or, or even the Jersey Boys, you know, the, the, the uh, musical, the Jersey Boys. That's right. I don't know if you read that story, but it was a bunch of dentists, you know, really just average people who cut together and they, they became multi-millionaires just from that show. Right, right. And so you can... Like uh, the, the, the drugstore near your house, has anybody ever offered you the chance to invest in that real estate, $1,000? They've never asked you because they don't want $1,000. But if they get $1,000 from 1,000 people, it's interesting. then they can. <laughs> and, you know, and you know the real estate in yeah. your community, and so you can reinvest in your community because you know that real estate, whereas you may not know it across the country, you do know it down the block. So it really encourages you to reinvest in your community. Yeah, it's fantastic. I love the idea. Now, crowdfunding was happening before uh, you know the Jobs Act, uh, but since the Jobs Act, all, the number of platforms have literally exploded, and they've gone from pat on the back, you helped us do whatever, to actually becoming profitable making mechanisms. Talk a little bit about some of those rather than the ones that are just getting a credit at the end of that documentary. You know, ones that, that people are actually making money for. Right. right. They call uh, uh, crowdfunding like they do at church. That's that's uh, uh, charity-based. Uh, yeah, altruistic. Sure. Right. You, you feel better. You give a dollar, you feel better. The uh, rewards base is you get a t-shirt. Right. You give a dollar, you get a t-shirt. Um, the equity-based is you give a dollar, you get a share of stock. Or you get a dollar and you get repaid a dollar ten with interest. That has changed. So they have these things called funding portals. And they are a term of art by the Securities and Exchange Commission that basically says on these portals you can sell or, or, uh, uh, or raise money from the crowd whether they're accredited or not accredited. So you'll be able to invest in all sorts of different things that you never were able to before if you're unaccredited. If you're accredited, you probably didn't have that problem before. Right. But if you're unaccredited, which most of the country is, now the they have that is If you're not accredited, you don't have to participate at the same, same level as you do in accredited investments. That's correct. You, know, you can do it for a fraction of what you would normally have to do. There are literally some crowdfunding portals where you can invest a hundred dollars yeah. and get a return on your hundred dollars so it really has brought it down if I would have told you 20 years ago that I can get a book delivered to your house tomorrow cheaper than you can go across the street today and buy yeah. it you would have said I'm full of it right but what's happening is the cost of the transaction is coming down and so the cost of raising money is coming down so it's a cheaper faster way to raise money from the crowd to do whatever type of project you want. So 
that's what's really changed is the equity and debt crowdfunding. Can you name a couple of those that are actually equity based? Sure. So there's one here in Texas, believe it or not, we're crowdfunding for oil and gas. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Crude Funders and crudefunders.com. And for as little as $1,000, you can buy an interest in an oil and gas well. Well, a year ago, no one wanted your $1,000 because they all the paperwork and just for $1,000, we only want hundreds of thousands of dollars. But today, it is so inexpensive to raise a hundred. I'm sorry, a hundred thousand dollars from a hundred people giving a thousand dollars, and uh, um, that's one. The other, the other one is uh, there's a realstarter.com. Real starters out of Austin. What they do is they crowdfund real estate. So, and those are all over the country. These real estate crowdfunding portals. Uh, we've crowdfunded. What kind of investment are those demanding? Well, a um, thousand dollars. You yeah. can invest a thousand dollars. Dollars seems to be pretty key. That's right. It, it, the ones that are doing it for a hundred dollars, everybody shakes their head and said, "Good grief! How can they do it for such a small amount of money?" But the Amazon example is they can do it for the small amount of money because they're using technology in order to report, and nothing is on paper. Everything is electronic. You can invest at two a.m. in the morning. All the disclosures are electronic. All the reporting is electronic. In fact, you really can't have any conversations with investors over the phone. They want them all by email right. or electronic so that they can validate and, and uh, accountability, I guess, is the, the big issue. That, that's right. And the Securities and Exchange Commission also believes that the crowd will self-police. Mm -hmm. Because if there's a crook that's raising money, someone in the crowd is going to say, that guy's a crook. Yeah. But if you in order to protect our own investment, that's right. He's going to say, "Do you know what happened to that guy last week?" So if you can't raise money in the middle of Main Street, telling your story, crowdfunding is not for you. Right. But if you do raise money, and you do do what you say you're going to do, you're going to pay ten percent return or whatever return you say you're going to do. The second time will be much easier. You just dashed my dreams. No, I'm just joking. Well, <laughs> you know, some people may... There's no tell-all book. It would be really short and kind of boring. But anyway... And, and some people may say, you know, if if Kevin's investing in it, I want to invest in it. Right. And let you do the due diligence because you know real estate or you know oil and gas or whatever you might know. And so people would follow you and just say, well, if he's in, I'm in for 1000 mm -hmm. or, or 10000 whatever whatever the, the dynamics of that deal might be. So... You can crowdfund anything, but I believe that crowdfunding is the next form of real estate syndication. And Very cool. That's that's what people should keep an eye out for. Very cool. Manfred Sternberg, and he is involved in a lot of different things, but particularly crowdfunding is, is uh, the thing that you're more focusing on today. And just for a, a disclaimer's sake, you're actually involved in one of the ones you mentioned. Talk a little bit about that and how long have you been involved in that. I've been involved with crude funders for a couple of years, and as I tell my wife, it's it's crowdfunding, it's oil and gas, and it's Texas. How big could it be? Mm -hmm. And so we are at the infancy of this industry, and it will explode over the next 20, 30 years. It will become much more commonplace than it is today. And how many different projects are they investing in at any one time? Well, they are investing in one at a time, mm -hmm. but you know, really the early ones are probably the ones that you want to get into because those are going to be the successful ones, right? Because if we do a whole bunch of bad deals, you won't want to come into that portal. So the early deals are all pretty much successful. They're not guaranteed, but everything's pretty much successful because they don't want to do bad deals because if I told you... You're going to be more selective early on. That's correct. In order to build confidence. We would like to, we would like to uh, suggest that we get the cream of the cream of the cream. Right. And so those are all good. Yeah. But as things go along, people are going to drill dry holes or, or real estate is not going to increase in value as they said it would or the film is not going to be sold. Any of those things can happen. There's risk, but there's also reward. Yeah, Abilene wasn't going to be the new DFW. <laughs> <laughs> 
sorry. I, I went to Abilene Christian University, so don't be sending me any hate mail. But uh, yeah, that's cool. So that's very interesting. And so then that's an interesting thing to look at because you guys have a lot more writing uh, on the, each of these projects in a way that traditional oil and gas investment deals do. Because, because you know, the credit investors are unfortunately very familiar with those deals going south. That's right. just part of doing business. But if you're dealing with people who are trying to stick their toe in the water and writing a check for $1,000 is significant, you have got to be really careful and much more vigorous in your due diligence on the front end than you are in dealing with those accredited investors. Yes, and so you want to look at what the crowd is doing, what the crowd is saying, and who is the crowd. Are they knowledgeable people that are investing? And you may want to invest with them. Um, but you can see who's investing and, and what the deals are online and all the disclosures are there, so you should read those and understand the risk and don't invest what you can't afford to lose. It's like the stock market or real estate or any other thing, except you can invest in such smaller increments. And you can also use your IRA, your self-directed IRA, which enables you to grow whatever profits you make tax-deferred. Very good. Uh, Manfred Sternberg, he's been our guest. What is the best website that you want to give? Would it, would it be the crudefunding.com? Just yeah. let people check it out? Crudefunders.com is a great one to look at. You can register. They don't spam you, but if you register, you'll see what it's all about. You don't have to invest if you don't want to. There's no pressure, but you'll get to see the different deals that come online that are seeking investment. Uh, the other uh, one that you can go to is realtymogul.com, which is a national uh, portal for real estate and they say they only do one percent of the deals that come to them but so far they've been paying between eight and twelve percent interest on the money and it's all secured by real estate so wow yeah so it's it's well, let's finding a bank account for a grand that will do that that's pretty impressive that's right it's great for someone uh, we call it nervous money people that don't want to invest in the stock market because they don't know where it's going but they don't yeah. want to earn half of a, a percent in the right. bank but they know the real estate in their neighborhood is good, and if they knew they could invest in that real estate and have someone else deal with it all, they're happy. Yeah, I love it. Very cool. Manfred, I appreciate you being with us today. Any final thoughts for the listener out there? No, just keep your eye on crowdfunding because it will be the new way of raising money in in the, the United States. It just Do you see be. it having an adverse effect even on traditional banking? You know, uh, I don't know. I think banking now, the banking industry primarily makes money off of fees. <laughs> I don't know how much money. I mean, we know they're not making money off of interest rates because interest rates virtually are not existent. Uh, they're not even making that much on loans because uh, money, you know, is so competitive that they can't go much higher. I think that's their primary way of making money, but what little money they're getting in that space seems like it could be really easily uh, distracted by uh, 8 to 10 percent interest returns on a thousand dollar investment. Well, your CD can do that. That's right. You're exactly right. And the banks that have studied this all, all say that crowdfunding is disruptive to their business model because basically you're looking at the crowd as the bank. So can I buy this piece of property for two hundred thousand dollars? Traditionally you'd go to the bank have to give them all your financials, etc., and then they charge you, you know, whatever they charge you. You can do that with the crowd, and you can get $1,000 from 200 people, and you've raised that $200,000. So it really displaces the bank, because what does a bank do? It aggregates money from all these people, and then it loans you, and they pay 1%, and then they loan it to you at 8%, and they make the difference. Yeah. It's you're just disintermediating the bank. You're going directly you're, to the crowd. Yeah, absolutely. You're almost torpedoing the bank. So, which in a lot of what we've seen lately, we kind of like that idea. <laughs> Very good. Good to see you today. Nice to see you. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, crudefunding.com. Crudefunders.com. Crudefunders. I keep saying it wrong. So listen to him, not me. Crudefunders.com. Make sure it. you check that out. I think it, it sounds like a great idea. And uh, people really need to take ownership when it comes to their investments and what they do. And so I love projects like yours and ideas like yours that are driving that concept. So thanks so much. All right, uh, that wraps up today's show. Do want to remind you the show continues 24-7 at priceofbusiness.com. While there, like it on Facebook, follow it on Twitter. You have heard it said, ignorance of the law is no excuse. 
You don't have to be a lawyer to get proper litigation defense when you defend yourself with any weapon to include a karate chop or a gun. No license required. All you need is selfdefensefund.com, who will litigate on your behalf all the way to the Supreme Court if necessary, covering all court fees and appeals. A gun law class or seminar may not keep you out of prison, but a selfdefensefund.com membership could. We are on standby 24-7 to defend our members aggressively. One call, no out-of-pocket expense or reimbursement plan, comprehensive and extensive benefits like no other. Selfdefensefund.com. Lawyers are standing by. Any weapon, any state, any time.